Welcome everybody to Creative Control. This is the podcast where we dive into music, God, and the intersection of faith and creativity. And as you can already hear, today on our very first podcast, we have the illustrious Grammy winning, two time Grammy winning drummer, Derek C. Phillips with us today. Um, he's not only a Grammy Award winning drummer, but he's also my uncle yes. and the band leader for No Big Deal Unplugged, which happens on March 9th. Welcome to the very first episode of Creative Control, Unc. I am honored and humbled, nephew. Thank you for having me. This is beautiful. This is lovely. I am excited to be a part of this. Thank you for having me. You could have chose a lot of people besides me, but I think. No, I'm it had you. to be you for the first one. <laughs> it had to be you for the first one. I don't even know if we're going. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. All right. We're, he said we're going. We so, in there. We in there. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> we uh, we have been together all day today. Facts. Facts. Um, we were rehearsing for the Unplugged show earlier, and I, uh, I was telling you that that was the most fun that I've ever had in a, in a music rehearsal ever. Um, just because, man, having a nine piece band, like having my music, like translated onto mm. all those instruments. Yes. Of course you had like absolute murderers and killers. Oh man. In the room. Beast. Like fully, full on beast. Mike Hicks. Uh, <laughs> who else? Oh man. Um, Giovanni Rodriguez on percussion and trumpet. Crazy. Evan Cobb on saxophone. Adrian Taylor oh, on bass. Kylie Phillips. Evan Acklin. No or, relation, but relation. No relation. Yeah. I, she, we call her cousin, even though she's not, <laughs> not by blood, but she's yeah. definitely a cousin. So, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was amazing. It was beautiful. Um, and I can't wait to share that experience with the people. Likewise. I mean, that's the thing. Like I, I, I mean, I'm glad you allowed me to have this job of, uh, getting these people together and assembling this team, but I literally just call my favorite people in Nashville that I haven't worked with in a while that are just straight killers in their respective um, positions. And I just love the fact that I'm going to have so much fun just being around them, obviously working with you because you're my nephew family. This is a long time coming to, to collaborate on this level in that I'm excited that people in the audience are going to, they're going to feel it's going to, I believe it's going to be palpable, the love, the appreciation, and just the admiration on stage and that that will transmit through the music to them and they get to have a snapshot of how, really how we feel about each other and that's that's what's really cool about that to me yeah it's it's always way different when it's um when the music comes out of actual relationship mm -hmm. actual community yes sir genuine love it's way different than you know when you're just hired to do a gig or you're hired to play yep. on something then absolutely when I mean, I, when I came in the room, it just felt I was telling you earlier, it just felt like it was a bunch of mutual fans in the room. Yes. Like I'm coming in the room <laughs> like I, I didn't want to let on, but I'm like intimidated. Like I'm a little bit like, dang, man, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like right, uh, right. and but everybody had so much gratitude and respect for everybody so much love each other yes so much admiration for what each person brought to the table truly man um and so um uh, i'm excited to share that with with the people at unplugged and you know um like i said this is our launch episode for creative control yep. and one of the major themes that i want to discuss throughout this podcast is the intersection of faith and creativity mm -hmm. and all the different ways that we kind of interact with God um, through imaging him through being creative. Yes, right? sir. And yes, all the sir. different touch points. And one of the things that we just hit on just naturally, you know, that I think people maybe don't think about as deeply is, um, you know, uh, creation coming out of love. Yep. We said you can always tell when that um, when it's that way instead of you're just a hired gun. Um, and I think we see the same thing with God. That's one of the oh, things no that that I believe is like one of the beautiful things about the idea of the Trinity mm -hmm. of um, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit 
um, is that that's a community. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God is a community um, that has <laughs> that has yeah. always been love. So one thing my pastor said is that um, our God was love before he was a creator mm. because he existed before yep. he created and he existed in a community that was constantly <laughs> outdoing each other in love. And then out of that love came everything that we see. Oh my gosh. Yeah, man. You just, you, you hit on the head. You're, you just tapped into the zone I've been living in for the past couple of years. I, yeah, I'm just in a zone of that. Just yes. Recreating that. And, and I, and I know that this may be controversial, but like, I feel like far too often, or maybe this is just my perception that when we view church, we just think it's a place you go to and then you have your community there, but you go there, but it can expand beyond those walls. Mm -hmm. And that's, I love that. So, I mean, this, I felt that this morning, mm -hmm. like it felt like church or it felt like, like you really felt the, I felt a weight of the body of Christ in there because I, once I looked into everyone's eyes and just saw them performing and, and, and ex, ex, expressing their gifts, I just, all I felt was love for them. Yeah. It was deep love. And so, yeah, you hit, yeah, I'm all about that community, man. That's, Yes. Mm -hmm. I love how you summed it up. And I mean, I think that we, you know, we talk about the image of God, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, God being the first and the greatest creative, mm -hmm. you know, that alone, that statement alone makes me want to, I, I think our culture should value the act of creativity more because absolutely, it's not just something that like some people do. <laughs> um, right. Exactly. But part of, the image of God, the Imago Dei, or how we look like God. Mm, come on, bro. Come on. Yes, sir. Is yes, sir. by us yes. doing what he does in yes. creating. Yes. Right? That's <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, I think that when we're in creative spaces like this morning, we can tap into some of the beauty that God intended us to see by giving us his image. Absolutely. You know, placing us in, you know, um, you know, even if you take the garden, like to be fruitful and multiply, to cultivate the garden, to take the raw material and make it into something else. Like this is something that God always wanted. Creativity is yes, not sir. something that like I think sometimes people think of creativity as like, OK, this is a thing that exists that doesn't really have anything to do with God. But maybe if you love God enough, you can. Um, kind of version creativity in a way mm. that will glorify him. And it's like, no, no, creativity was always part of the original idea for us. Yes, yes, exactly. Like before a lot of other <laughs> stuff, it was like, I, I actually want you guys to be creatives in this thing, Bro. in this place that I created. Exactly. You I know? mean, I tell people all the time, like, yeah, we were created by a creator. We are called creatures. Mm. It's in the root <laughs> of what we are. Yeah. So, of course, yes. Being showing how we're made in the image of God is to create, and I, and I do. It does frustrate me that it's not a specialized thing. Like people look at us and they think, "Oh, I wish I can do. It. I wish I was creative." We all have the capacity to create. It just looks different. Mm -hmm. But if we truly are living who we are, and then express that, that's that's how we do that. Like I also think of another quote from was it Chariots of Fire? The main character said, "You know, when I run, I feel God's glory." And he was a runner. I was like, well, I'm a drummer. When I play drums, I feel God's glory. Mm -hmm. Like I, 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 I don't want to be anywhere else. And I'm, I'm so fascinated. I feel like I'm fully used or more so used, at least aware. I'm more aware that I'm being used when I'm creating and when I'm performing or writing music or what have you. So yeah, I'm with you hundred percent. Yeah. And that's beautiful. And I think something you said, um, that people think, you know, we are creatives. Okay. You're a drummer. Uh, you're a rapper. You guys are creatives. I have a regular nine to five. I'm not creative. Right. But wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wrong. wrong. Uh, but like being a creative, like creative problem solving, like first, first of yes. all, we'll, we'll just say this right off the bat. Like if in any way you are helping to raise a child, mm. automatically you're creative. You don't oh, get come to say, on. Now. Come on. Now. <laughs> you don't get to say, do you preaching? You don't get to say you're not a creative. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, 
um, creating creating organizational systems, raising a family, like creating uh, uh, meal plans, cooking. First uh, yeah. of all, cooking is, in my opinion, cooking is high art. Like in my, <laughs> oh like yeah, if you, you know, absolutely. You, you know, you have orchestras, you have ballet, and to me, you have like cooking. Like this is a high art form. Yes, anything that's taking the existing things that that God made um, and creating something new out of it. That's creating uh, yeah. ideas, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I'm, I'm definitely with you on the, like, everybody is a creative. Um, it's, it's just a matter of like perspective and, and maybe even, um, uh, kind of valuing the things you're already doing. Totally. Totally. And I think sadly, I think some people may use it as a cop out. It's easy to, to um, kind of relieve themselves of that responsibility and obligation to create. It's easy to say, well, I'm not a creator because it might take something from me that will make you uncomfortable or put you in a position that, that can make you grow. So it's easy to, to push it aside and say, oh, that's for those people as opposed to own it and then find your way through it. Yeah, that's true. That's really, yeah, that's really good. Um, I want to back up a little bit because although obviously by how long we've already been talking in our chemistry, uh, we have obviously, I've, I, you've known me since the very beginning. Day one. And I, Day one. I I've known. That's you got spit up by your mama, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, are we, we're leaving. Okay. We're yeah, leaving that, that in. No, we got to leave that All in. right. We so, leave that um, in. yeah, let me get my train of thought back. Uh, <laughs> you have known me since the beginning and I have known you since I gained consciousness sometime around like three and a half or whatever. Right, you know right, what right. I mean? <laughs> uh, but the people don't necessarily know who you are other than the intro that I gave you while you were, you, you might've during that intro, you might have made the official theme song when you were hey. beatboxing. Yeah. When you, <laughs> for, yeah. You can have that. I'll get that for free. Get for free. creative control. <laughs> um, but I'm sure that people want to know about like our, our relationship and our history um, and so I, I have the answer in my head, but I want you to, I want to see what your idea is of how you got me into what I'm doing in my career. Oh, wow. Well, I don't know if I can, <clears throat> I do appreciate you for looking to me and, and crediting me for introduce you to music the way, that way you came into it. But I don't know if I can take much credit for it, but I know that. <clears throat> I mean, we we're from a musical family. Um, your grandparents were avid music lovers and at one point aspiring professional musicians. And then once they started having kids that th the responsibility shifted and then um, they had three boys and um, the first one being your father. And I loved growing up in my home because I incessantly heard music and I heard all different types of music. So if it was, if, if your grandfather got a hold of it, usually it was jazz, blues, or James Brown. Your grandmother would play everything from R&B and pop to classical. Your dad was, grew up in the 70s, 60s and 70s, so I heard a lot of Parliament, Elton John, Led Zeppelin. Um, our brother, your your other uncle, grew up with me in the 80s, so I heard everything from dang, LL Cool J to Suicidal Tendencies to Public Enemy. And so I just loved growing up in the home because I got a whole swath of music in into my system and I just I didn't I just thought everyone listened to all different types of music like I didn't know any better just that that seemed like the way so thankfully coming full circle now as a professional musician I get to play a whole variety of music I get to make a living with that diverse background so I'm grateful for that so so when it comes to you like obviously I I don't know how conscious I was of it but I know that I know one thing I could pass on to you was music mm. and so, or just at least at the very least share with you. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that you were a fan of hip hop. Obviously your dad is a big hip hop head. Yeah. He was, he was sneaking. <laughs> we have to do a little aside yeah, here. Yeah, we, yeah. He was, he was sneaking hip hop uh, because, you know, mom, uh, obviously, you know, you know, mom was uh, trying to keep it really clean, yep. really G <laughs> rated and, and, and really kind of, protect me from a lot of the themes in mm -hmm. some of the hip hop. Rightfully so. Uh, but when, when I was with dad, I was with dad, you know, and it was, <laughs> it was time for Onyx and it was time for, you know, uh, 
he was listening to underground stuff in the nineties too, like Thug Nation. I don't even think anybody That's crazy. I don't I don't like now as an adult, I'm like, I think Thug Nation might have sold Whoa. like three hundred CDs out of the trunk and dad just like had one of them. You know <laughs> I what I think I'm you're right. That's bananas, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yeah, your dad and and your other uncle, they they would go deep on like a lot of West Coast hip hop that no one probably knows. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, so I know when I, I became conscious of my relationship with God, find out who Christ was in like 96. And so me being a hip hop head, cause it definitely was a music. I felt like it was music of my genre. It was born almost the same time I was, I was born uh, two years after hip hop was credit to be born. And y'all can't tell baby. Cause black don't that's, crack. That's right. You that's thought right. He was you like two years know. older than me. That's right. You had no time. idea. Everyone thought all. I was your older brother. They ain't <laughs> uncle. What? <laughs> Uncle, dang. Them parents must have had them late. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so I know for me, like, it was I early on, I think this happens a lot of people early on in their, in their walk with Christ, you want to kind of banish all things of so-called of the world. And so, but I loved hip-hop. And so I, when I, 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 I've searched for it, I was like, well, there's, there's, there's got to be, like, some hip-hop that I like. And like, gospel was actually popping back then in the, in the late 90s. I mm-hmm. mean. Fred Hammond and John P. Key and Hezekiah Walker, Ooh. obviously Kurt Franklin. Yeah. I mean, CC Wine is, it was popping. It was influencing yeah. the mainstream, not Absolutely. the other way around. It was influencing Absolutely. R&B. Absolutely. Yeah. No question, Mary Mary. Yeah, so, and then I, I was, I was, I remember being in a record store just digging around and it might have, I just, I was looking for some hip hop and I discovered, uh, I think the first one might have been Grits maybe. Mm. I was like, oh, what's this? And, I don't, I don't want to wait just too long, but side note, I actually met Todd Collins. Fast forward, I'm actually friends with Todd Collins. And it was crazy meeting him. He plays with Kelly Clarkson now. So I met him at a Kelly Clarkson show. And I didn't realize that he was the same Tom, Todd Collins that started Goatee Records with Toby Mac, yeah. who signed Grits. Grits. Right, <laughs> I was geeking out when we we made that discovery. Man, anyway. Shout out Grits, man. They're, shout out they're, Grits. Uh, I, I saw them at uh, the Dove Awards and then a, a couple parties around Nashville and like, they showed so much love to like That's beautiful. What, what we're doing, what Indie Tribe is doing. And I, d- I didn't know we were mutual fans like that. And That's it so was dope. really dope to That's see so some dope. like legends who like just the humility and, and, yes. and, and uh, it, it was just great to see that. So shout out. Grace pioneers, man. man. Pioneers. Yeah. So that, so I got on that and then that got hip to like the tunnel rats and a couple other groups and then cross moving. And then I freaked out watching BET because again, I'm serious hip hop head. And I remember the first time I saw a cross movement video on BET. Oh, I didn't know they they had videos on BET. Yes, Crazy. yes, representatives. Oh, that yeah. was the video, and Crazy. I I got so hyped. I was super hyped. I was like, man, I was so excited. I was like, dude, that's what I've been looking for. Like, rap, like because it was hard. Like the lyric, I mean, everything. Technically proficient, beats were great, message was beautiful. Like nothing corny. It was just like authentically genuine musicianship also just happened to be brought to you by Christians. Right. And it just, it hit me, man. It hit me. And so I remember one Christmas, I, again, knowing that you were big into hip hop and back when you were big head. <laughs> oh, pre, no, pre, wow. Pre, no big they deal never day. heard that name. That's crazy. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what happens when you get family on. You get, wow. You I get, forgot you get about the family that name. secrets, bro. <laughs> so yeah, my first, my first rap name, I, that probably was my first, my first rap so. name was, was big head. Uh, yeah, let's just keep going. Let, there you I go. They, yeah, that's that's, I think yeah. that sums it up right there. Yeah. So, yeah. so again, knowing your love for that, I think I even, I mean, well, we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, so knowing that you have a love for hip hop and creating, you're doing spoken word as well. So I was like, and I think the first, it was the first CD I gave was the Lecrae CD. Um, that's not the first. That's uh, not the first one. That's not the first Christian hip hop CD. I remember. I think I just I have a distinct memory of giving you that one for Christmas one year. You de- you definitely gave that to me. Yeah, but you gave me two before that. I did. Yeah, now this turned into trivia. So oh, you gave shit. me After the Music Stops for Christmas. You're right. But you, by the time you gave me that, we were already in we're Tennessee. We're already deep a little bit. That's right. In, in, in the, uh, the the White House in Tennessee. So you yeah. gave me two before then. Whoa. Can you can you guess which ones they were? Was it was it one of them Grits? No. Cross Movement. Yes. Okay, Cross Movement. Was that the, was that the representatives? One? Yes, House of Representatives. House of representatives. That's one. And then you gave me another Someone, one shortly after that. The Tunnel Rats? No. Dang. It's it's close to uh to cross movement. Dang. Very, Gospel Gangsters? No. 
damn, what the heck did I give you, man? Oh, snap. He gave me Ambassador Christology. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, the green Duh, joint. That's yeah, right. The, when he's squatting down. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How could I forget that? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. So, uh, yeah. That's you, right. Yeah. You you gave me House of Representatives. Mm-hmm. Uh, we in the era of the living superstar. Yes, yes. we are. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're born, you suffer, you, you die. die. But, but there's, there's a, a loophole. loophole. <laughs> but there's a loophole. Yeah. Okay. I was, bro, I was the probably the... Maybe the youngest person bumping bumping those those CDs. I love that so much, man. Um, I love that so much. Yeah. So you get you gave me Cross Movement Ambassador, and then eventually Lecrae after the yeah. music stops. I done whip yeah. my top down listening to that Jesus music. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean <laughs> that that you know that changed my whole perspective um, on Christian music because I mean I had uh, you know I had grown up in the church and I had heard a lot of Christian music, but to me, Christian music was more like um, either gospel, straight up gospel. Obviously yep. that's just been around my whole life. Right. Or um, uh, CCM, like Christian contemporary music, yep. newsboys, mm-hmm. um, that type of stuff, like OG newsboys. Um, and I DC talk probably. DC yeah, DC Talk. talk. Uh, well, at, but it was Toby Mac by the time I was oh, coming yeah, that's up. True, that's I didn't. True. I actually didn't know about DC Talk. I knew about like Toby Solo. Gosh, gotcha, that's right. That's um, right. But I wasn't. I wasn't heavy into Christian music. Yeah. Um. But like me and my friends had, you know, we had been rapping. You know, just right. little kids who loved rap, and we were rapping, and we were, we were d- putting Christian things in our lyrics. But I didn't have a category for. Yes. Christian rap as a genre. I was just like, I'm rapping and I'm a rap about the stuff that makes sense for exactly. me. So when you when you gave me those CDs that actually gave me a framework for like, oh, there's like multiple acts and guys who are like, we are specifically Christian hip hop. Yeah. And we uh uh we are dedicated to the craft of hip hop as well. Like we're yes. just ill MCs. Like we can hang with anybody. Exactly. Um, but we talk about the stuff that's in our heart. So that was, that was a big like uh paradigm shift for me when you gave me those CDs. I love it. I love it. That's beautiful. Wow, man. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah, I would say, yeah, I mean, you, we, we both got to the same point. You knew it was giving me kind of the CD uh, that kind of put me on to, to Christian hip hop. Yeah. Um, the other part of that is just growing up, like going to see you at at shows, like going to see you at jazz clubs or at concerts. Um, and that used to be like, I used to be so hype when my parents would be like, we're going to see your uncle play, you know, with Charlie Hunter or um, <laughs> uh, what was the um, the lady that you played with? Um, she had a song called Hide Me. And I remember. Oh, Aaron Bodie from Shameless. Aaron Bodie, yes. yeah. And like that concert to me, was like these were just larger than life events to me <laughs> at the time. And like. That's awesome. You know, at some of your gigs, there would be um, spoken word poets, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think being in that environment of live music and poetry and um, just like lyricism, metaphor, um, it was very formative. Mm uh to me to how i saw the world um and knowing that you were a man of faith like and that you were you know giving me this all of this kind of shaped my mind on <laughs> you know creativity and the divine and uh and so that makes it even more special that now you know finally 20 years later right we are working on uh music you know yes. together you know yes. and we and we i mean we did. We have worked on music together. Yes, we have. <laughs> Since keep, then, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know? I keep thinking about that session we did. But I think it was before I lived there. I came down, yeah, and you were rapping. I played drums on. We did two songs. Uh, you're talking about in middle school, like yeah, middle school. Uh, rap group, uh, Southside Epidemic. Yeah, <laughs> Southside Epidemic. Southside <laughs> Epidemic. Shout out, uh, Ty, yes, aka Ty. Notation. You know what I'm saying? He, yep. uh, I think he, he, I think he'll be at the show. Yes, I think Ty will be at the show. Dude. Yes, uh, we definitely gotta, dude. gotta talk to him if he comes yes. to the show. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Was uh, uh, let's clip this. And let's clip. Well, I just spit, but let's clip this <laughs> and put it on the internet so that Ty feels more pressure to come <laughs> to the show. You better be out here, Ty. You, know what you what better saying? be out here. 
uh, and uh, Tevin. 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 Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes. What was Tevin's name? Uh, I can't remember. It was, my name was Truth at the time. That's right. You were Truth. That's right. Truth, the realest under the heavens. <laughs> uh, notation. I think Tevin's name was Tevin because I, I remember right. in the verse I, w- I would rhyme it. Like, right. Truth, the realest under the mm-hmm. heavens plus notation in Tevin. Yes. <laughs> that's, oh, that's so dope. That's so dope. Wow. Yeah. So so just so the, the people know, like, like I can set the scene for the people. So this is like, I think this was a birthday thing that mom set up, right? When we, when we all went yes. to the studio. Yes, 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 yes so that's right, was, that's right. It was it was one of the middle school birthdays, and mom set up studio time, um, and I don't remember what studio that was. That wasn't Big remember. Smoke. It was like in studio. Christiana or something? Was it Big Smoke Studio? Maybe. I feel like it was in Christiana. That's, that's where Spot is. It might have been, been Big Smoke Studio. Yeah. Shout out Big Smoke. Shout out Ken Folk Big Smoke. Yeah. Um, But... Yeah, she set up some studio time at a local studio for my birthday. Um, you came out as the the main producer. I don't know. <laughs> did you make all the beats? I just oh, that's a good question. I might have. I what I remember there was one song where I played drums and bass on it. Yeah, that was, and yeah. I loved that one. Uh, <laughs> Pimping is easy. Yeah, yeah, Pimping is. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That Pimpin was a one. Pimping is easy. Yep. Pimping is easy. Trust me, yeah, I, I know. know. My wrist stay breezy. Mm, flow is so cold. S E and D feezy. Make the track go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pimping is easy. Um, <laughs> and uh, the oh, I can't remember the. I can't. That's the one I remember though. That and that's the that's one the one I remember the, the most. Yeah. And stuff on, and I'm yeah. not a bass player, y'all. But I, but I play bass. Nah, but we had we had so much fun. We felt like we so were like fun. superstars. Like just, and again, I mean, just to be like, uh, you you gave us a lot of validation, and you never like patronized us as like you know kids or whatever. Like you made us feel like, you know, we were really doing it. And I think that was you were. Impo- I think that was important for all of our absolutely man, all of our development. So truly, truly, um, yeah. I mean. You say you can't take uh, much credit, but I mean, I, I mean, I think anybody watching this, based on the stories we just told, would be like, "No, I mean, I, I think it was you. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think it, I think it would have went different without I you." Mean, I mean, yeah, you got a point there, man. You got a point. You know what I'm saying so. Uh, yeah, so okay, this unplugged show that we've been talking about, yes, we yes, had yes. a rehearsal for it earlier Ooh, today, man. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit because you're, you're the band leader and a lot of people, um, especially probably in my world who are used to hearing, you know, um, uh, me and my peers and my friends just rap over um, tracks, you know, programmed by amazing producers are not necessarily used to the live music aspect. Right. They might not know exactly what goes into being a band leader. Mm. So can you talk about kind of translating my tracks um, into this this live music space? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, there's some steps to it. I mean, first of all, like, obviously knowing your music and then my first thought is, okay, how do I take this and translate this into live form? So one was instrumentation. Like, what do I need? Okay, well, this song has flute parts and this this other song has a saxophone. Okay, I need a horn player that can play a saxophone and flute. Or this one, <clears throat> this one has three-part harmony for vocalists, so I need three background singers. So just knowing what the songs actually need from a musical standpoint. So that's the first step. So instrumentation was the first step. Then the next step was, well, I got to obviously pick my favorite and the best musicians on the, at those respective spots, which which I did. <laughs> and I'm not bragging on myself by any means. I'm just saying these people are incredible. Killers. Killers, straight killers, man. So, and that was the next step. And then once, because the beauty, it was funny, I was talking to Mariah about this today, but like, I felt like the best the best example of a of a of a good musical director or producer is picking the best qualified musicians. Like mm. pick, you picked the best, like the best musician, the best producers pick the best musicians. Mm. So that was my that was my goal. Okay, I need to pick the best musicians because even 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 though I have a vision, one they can translate my vision, but they could also see something I don't see because they're so gifted in their specific part that they can bring something out that will add to well, that will actually one thing capture um, that what I'm trying to get to or what what you need in the music and also they will enhance it because it'll make it even better mm-hmm. and then literally that happened in <laughs> in the rehearsal yeah. like i just got them together and then yes i had i i had to write out 
you know, charts and roadmaps so everyone knew their and then specific arrangements and what parts would people do because like some of and then so also like when you think about instrumentation and you also have to think about well there's some songs that don't have that so like there's some songs you have string parts so we're like mm-hmm. well I'm gonna have the I, do I have the horn players duplicate there or do I have the keyboard player play a string part and then what happens to the keyboard part so thinking about all that stuff so finding people that are versatile that can hear the music that can translate it on their respective instrument and uh, yeah and so that was part of it. and then and then obviously giving them all the tools like making sure all the vocalists have their lyrics and know which parts to sing and and making sure everyone know the chord progressions and, and the and the length of songs and when when is the chorus coming after the verse and and then and then we had some creative ideas ex- example with a few you know remixes and if you will so knowing how will those work out and how to make those fit and so yeah so it, it is it is a lot of work it's fun because I get to nerd out on music a lot during this process I'm definitely listening to your stuff intensely it's amazing how much of your lyrics get into my system as I'm listening, mm. just trying to learn chord progressions or f- pinpoint certain parts for people to play. So yeah. And then it's executing. And oh yeah, by the way, I have to play drums on it. So I have to learn my own parts. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So it, 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 it is, it can seem like a daunting task. It's very beautiful. And um, I love the fact that it gets me inside the music, but it, it, it is a process and it, it, it is hard work, but it's, it's fun work. I love it. Especially when you love the material, like I, <clears throat> it's definitely harder when you're doing that for music that you're not a fan of. But since I'm a fan of you and the music, it makes it so easy. So listen to your music 24 seven is like, cool. What, how, what could be better than that? Listen to my nephew killing on the mic over these dope beats. So yeah, it was an easy in for me. Yeah. And uh, we were, we were talking earlier about this, but um, something that where I was just kind of, um, amazed at your your role and your leadership in the band leader position is um how you can kind of speak two languages so like me and a lot of you know rappers a lot of hip-hop producers a lot of my friends we don't we don't talk theory much we don't talk music theory much we don't talk music charts um we are we absolutely are musicians but the language that we speak is um much more on like man like try this flow what's this flow you yeah. know what i mean or what's this cadence or this rhyme scheme um or this vibe of the song so we're doing a lot of musical things in the studio but our language for it is vibe flow cadence um rhyme scheme uh try this you know what mm-hmm. i mean we're not speaking in these technical terms um and you speak both languages. You speak mm-hmm. the the studio language of hip hop, you know, mm-hmm. and you also speak the technical language of music music theory, and then a whole nother language, which is the Nashville number system. Oh yeah. And I was watching you kind of like translate my ideas to the musicians through, and I was like, man, if he, if he was not here, this would be, <laughs> this would be. T- I mean, they're they're amazing musicians, so I think that they would figure out what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Absolutely. But I don't think that we would have been able to move as quickly, as efficiently, and make the um creative changes. You know, some some of the things we just came up with in the room today. Absolutely. And that was possible because there was this like free exchange of ideas. Um and uh in no little credit to your ability to be able to speak those speak both of those languages. So I would say that's like uh, for people who are wondering, like, what's the, kind of the role of a band leader in this? That's huge. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's, and I, like I told you before, like, there's been some instances where it was almost like I was default music director because the artists may not be able to confuse, I'm not talking about you, but other artists weren't able to convey what they needed in any way, shape, or form musically. And so I would have to translate from even just abstract thoughts or even just m- movements and facial expressions yeah, and just, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, that's a yeah. language too it, absolutely absolutely so i think just learning i'm i'm thankfully i i learn people and i like learning people and so finding out what how they speak and how they how to how to the, what they want how they express what they need and i'm I'm very cognizant of that so it, just, it makes it easy for me and, and i like it's kind of fun of figuring out okay this is what he really means he needs this mm-hmm. here so, and I can translate that to the technical song. Okay, we need to play this chord progression or, you know, or, or change the structure or whatever. Yeah, it's fun. I love it. I really yeah. do. It was a, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I felt a lot of gratitude in the room. I definitely felt 
God's presence in the room. And it, I, I want to know for you after today, since we've had, we've officially had one rehearsal, what song are you currently most excited about playing? And that's hard. I mean, Empty Without You, the, the new joint. Yeah. That's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Just, I mean, I wasn't even playing, but just listening to mm-hmm. Mike and Adrian, just the rest of the band just play and vibe on it. Man, it, I think what got me the most, and I'm probably going to get emotional, but watching the, the way they cared for your music and mm-hmm. how they were so invested. Like, I felt it. I saw it. The way they leaned in, the way they, man, it, it got me. It's like. Man, they, I was like, I'm seeing how they love the person I love. Yeah. And it, it kind of messed me up. I was like, wow, this is beautiful. I love this so much. To see expressed musically. Amazing. Yeah. I think that was probably a moment for everybody in the room. Um, and it, it's it's also special. There's, there's just a, a little bit more of a special element because that song is not out. Um, nobody knows that song. Uh, and so that, I, it, it's not, it's not even all the way fully written. I have a demo of it, but that, you know, you guys played off of, but it's not fully written. So I feel like this experience itself is part of the song being written. You know Mm, what I mean? mm, This is part of like, like God writing the song through us, you know, (laughs) it could have been finished before the rehearsal, but it wasn't. Right. Right. And I don't really believe in coincidences like that. So, um, I, for me, that's what I'm most excited to, um, to play also just because I think that was the one that man I, I was looking around too and I'm looking around at all these people that I have like the utmost respect for and they were like lost in it bro I'm saying like exactly they were lost in it man oh. uh, so yeah I, 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 <laughs> I that is uh, what I'm looking forward to this pro- I mean once we have another rehearsal it'll probably be, an- <laughs> it'll probably exactly. be another one I mean, it's hard to pick one but that yeah. one sticks out yeah um, okay so Let's see. I want to talk about your career a little bit more um, while I have you here. Like, you can't go anywhere or anything like that. Uh, all right, let's do this. What's the craziest gig you've ever had? Man, because it depends on what you mean by crazy. Crazy as in weird or awkward or... I I kind of meant, like, somewhere between, like, the the very best, but also like kind of unbelievable kind of crazy, but in a good way. Crazy. So crazy in a good way. Yeah. Like how did this happen? Right. There's two that stick out on my mind. I'm trying to think which one I want to start with first. Okay. I'll start with the most, the more recent one. So I got asked to be a part of the house band for the uh, CMT um, giants show. Like they, they honor on the CMT television show, they honor country legends. So um, Charlie pride had passed. Um, recently and uh, and they decided a few months later that they were going to actually do a tribute to charlie pride so <clears throat> i'm good friends with a producer tommy sims who's a phenomenal musician this dude i mean got to talk about a resume he's played with paul mccartney cheryl crow i mean um, yeah. he's worked with he produced a bunch of uh israel and new breed albums i mean dude is wow kill he's cold and yeah. killing on the bass that's range. incredible yeah he's got massive range, range. <clears throat> so he asked me to be a part of the house band play this and so how they do it is they um they just pick a, a handful of, pick a, a song list and then they pick a special guest to sing each song so it was one thing to be part of a tribute to charlie pride who's an african-american country singer mm-hmm. that who i only knew about my, my mom told me about him when i was little and he's the only wow. black country artist i ever heard of so i definitely had kind of a, a fascination with him also, sign out, he played in the Negro Leagues. I mean, this dude was beast. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Yes, he played in the Negro Leagues. That's and really wild. Yeah, and he was, like, touring back in the day, like, singing duet. Like, he was doing stuff that was almost unheard of, like, during segregation, doing duet, duets with, like, Tammy Wynette. Like, oh, wow. this dude is a legend. Okay. Yeah, please look him up, y'all. Yeah. Charlie Pride. So, <clears throat> so not only was it great to play his music, but then the artist they called, bro, I played with, <laughs> played with Luke Combs, Robert Randolph, Winona Judd, Leanne Womack. This is in one night? Garth Brooks, yes. <laughs> Garth wait, wait, Brooks. You got bro. that far into the list before <laughs> Garth Brooks. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Garth Brooks. My well, my and I mean, it was incredible. My two favorite, honestly, if I have to pick two, um, were um, George Strait and Gladys Knight. Bro, what? I got to play drums with Gladys Knight and George Strait. What? What? <laughs> and George Strait, on? dude, killers, killers. Yeah. Just the consummate professionals. George Strait just walked in just like your typical golf dad. 
shook everybody's hand, and just one take everything. One song, boom, done. Did read the teleprompter, do his prompt, boom, one take, done. Shook everybody's hand and walked. I was like, wow, that dude's a G. Yeah, <laughs> like that's a star. That's like, a G. Like, that's right a real there. like. Yes, yeah. you've been a star like most of your life. Yes, type of life. yeah, yes. And glad the same thing just came in, just some beautiful. I, yeah. ele- Bro, talk about that for a second. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a second. Like, <laughs> I was not expecting. Bro. Like, the list just kept getting more and more crazy. Right, it's it's still crazy. I left yeah. off half the people. It's still yeah. crazy. Do Darius Rucker, Mickey Guyton, yeah, yeah. So Gladys, um, she came in with her MD, very sweet, very polite, and dude, one take to two, like her voice, dude, hearing her voice was like, it's crazy, cause I mean, it was she's almost eighty, hearing her voice sing, um, I forget it was, uh something Mississippi when I saw anyway, when she sang it to the microphone, I heard the first time I heard Midnight Train to Georgia, like it was just mm-hmm. as clear and as crystal and beautiful as that. Oh man, I I freaked out. I got emotional. Mm-hmm. Like we and we couldn't yeah, stop talking about it when she left, dude. It was insane. Yeah. So that was that was a phenomenal experience. Just being that around. definitely qualifies as <laughs> that as was crazy. The, yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Uh, I I actually that made me think of a question that um, I I just always forget to ask you. I, I I was a little young, so I don't know if if this story has got messed up. But is it true that like you had the ability to go on tour? With the black eyed peas, but you didn't go because my cousin was being born. Is this true? <laughs> that is not entirely true. Okay, 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 okay. I did not have the opportunity to be on tour. There was a chance I'm I was I could have had an opportunity to audition, but that didn't happen. I did hang out with the black eyed peas one night. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was that I got to play the Montreal Jazz Festival with Charlie Hunter. And while we were hanging out there walking through Switzerland, um, I bumped into <laughs> Will I Am walking down the street. <laughs> Also crazy. Also crazy. And he's yeah. like, yeah, man, we'll come, come meet the rest of the band before the show. So we got, cause like the cool thing is like all the artists, they have access to Green. So I'm, I mean, legends are just everywhere. So well, I go back there and meet Will I Am, meet the rest of you know, Charlie and uh, some other people that we're with and they meet them. I meet Tabo and um, Apple D app and then Fergie. That's that time when Fergie was in the band. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Fergie and era. Fergie era. Exactly. So that's like when they were, Really yeah, popping off, massive, on. huge, massive, yeah. And so, it was like, what, two thousand eight, two thousand nine ish? A little before that's probably like oh five. Oh yeah, that, that's cool. That's true because they were big for like, because they had two big records. It was the one, yeah, it was the one with "Where's the Love." They had "Let's Get It Started." Let's Where's get it started. "Where's the, the Love." They were the best. And then they had then they had "Elephant," which was uh, "I Got a Feeling." Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was crazy. And then I got to hang with them, like after the show. It was like it was like. My first kind of rock star, but like being a VIP, hanging with the Black Eyed Peas and just watching. It was a surreal experience just watching. I was like, oh, this is this is how superstars hang. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a trip, man. That story yeah. uh, uh, definitely went through <laughs> telephone in our family until it became wow, solidified that, in my head that you were I going turned on down Black Eyed Peas. That's what, that's what it came down for, to. For, uh, <laughs> I don't know, Isaiah or Xavier or somebody, somebody's birth. Uh, that got added to your lore. You yeah. have lore now. You, Apparently, there, there's yeah. Uncle Derek. Man, Lord. that's that's funny. How okay, that okay, and on uh, like on that note, uh, what what was the connection to the Fugees, to Wyclef? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we when we lived in Jersey, we went to church with um Melky Melky Jean, who's a uh, Wyclef's sister. Crazy. So she actually sang at our church, and okay. so we we became friends, and um she invited us to come to the studio in Manhattan while she was cutting. I think it was at the Hit Factory. And so yeah. <laughs> Mariah and I brought our two toddlers <laughs> to the Hit Factory to watch our friend record while Wyclef Jean is in the control booth producing his sister. That is, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, man. It's, it's, funny. It's, it's a crazy life. It really it's a is. crazy life it in the really Phyllis is. family. <laughs> um, okay, so speaking of the... Intersec- the intersection of faith and creativity, how would you say faith has played a role in your creativity? Well, und- I mean, I think it's kind of undeniable. I kind of alluded to it before. Like when I create, I feel God's presence. I think that's, I think the beauty of music and, and obviously it's used in church to, to emote and evoke things. I mean, that's usually how, things get stirred up and people catch the Holy ghost and people running through aisles or, or crying or 
or become vulnerable, it, it, it takes us to a place. And it, it's, it's amazing how just pushing air and selecting a certain um, amount of pitches all played at once can bring out something out of people. And so I'm, that's never lost on me every time I create. I'm, 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 I'm so enamored by the fact that what we do can do that. I mean, it's, it's kind of undescribable, but the tangible evidence. And so that's what fascinates me, that we do something that's kind of, we take all this abstract and ethereal things and we ball them up together and spit them out at people. And then <laughs> it manifests into, into crying, laughing, dancing, joy, all that. So it's, it's really, it's beautiful. So yeah, I think uh, it's funny because I, I didn't, I didn't become a person of faith until uh, I was uh, almost like, when I was an adult, I was 20. But I think even as a kid playing, I, I, I had to, some kind of an awareness of the, the spiritual connection of playing music and creating. And uh, I guess I just, I could sense it, I guess. And um, I just didn't know what to call it. And so and then once I became a Christian, I, I started to understand what, what it was. I still can't fully describe it, but, yeah. <laughs> and I love that, that, I love the mystery of it too, that I can't really fully describe it. So it's, it's, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, when you were saying that it is kind of amazing how, you know, speaking out into different, like the, the, your breath and different pitches can have such an effect on people. I, like I can't help but be reminded of the creation story of God sure, speaking, right. exactly speaking things into existence. And, you know, I, I, one of the things that I love about scripture and that I love about God is that, um, he could have chosen any way to um, communicate with us, and he has chosen many ways. Um, but the authoritative way of scripture has so much poetry in it, mm -hmm. so much metaphor in it, mm -hmm. so many different literary devices. Um, uh, Jesus on earth chose to use parables. He could have spoken in a in a what we would call more like. Um, you know, scientific or rational way. He could have chosen any way. Exactly. He chose metaphor. He chose parable. Like he chose hyperbole. Yes. He chose hyperbole. Like yes. A lot of people, Jesus got bars, bro. He Jesus does got have bars. bars. <laughs> uh, I actually have a, a, a have a long running argument mm -hmm. with John Keith where I take the, what we're talking about to kind of an, an extreme, which is by necessity, doesn't Jesus have to be the best rapper by necessity? I mean, I think so. He ha he. John hates it. John John is like, <laughs> no, like like, and it's funny. It's funny because of how John is. Like, you would not think, but that's his. He's like, no, bro. Like, we're not like like God is. You're not saying that God is the greatest rapper. And I'm like, I think though. I think by necessity, he is the greatest rapper. You know. I mean, you kind of said it when you said spoken to. Like, God could have just thought it. It could have been a thought and just emerged. He spoke. What like, is, let me, let me say, what man. is a, name on. me one better bar than the universe. I'm saying no. That's, that's a mic drop name right there. Name me one saying. better rap bar than space time. Right. Yes. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. I don't Who's care. Who's got a bar as good as a supermassive black hole? I'm saying Tell the truth. Right. And shame the devil. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. All right. All, hey, I'm with you. Hey, I, you so, know, John Keith, bro, I love you, but. Yeah. Anyway, uh, send any uh, hate mail to johnkeith at gmail.com. The, the, if you would like all to caps. send hate mail, hate mail to uh, Creative Control Podcast, the email is johnkeith at gmail.com. Um, all right. Okay. What spiritual practice practices? What? Let me say again. What spiritual practices are essential? You do you consider essential in your life? I mean, definitely prayer. And and I, I noticed that the way I prayed has evolved because it used to be kind of systematic, and 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 I think uh, it was like I think someone taught me was it like like you've used the the acronym, which is actually a really good acronym, like praise, um, repent, ask, yield, which I think is a great format. Mm -hmm. But I'm finding more and more that I to go back to the mystery thing, I just want to be, I want to be completely removed from any kind of structure and just speak and just be going to the deepest level of consciousness I have to see God mm. and just speak from there. 
And it's not about asking for things. It's not about, it's just going there and just let it be a full, I want it to have it be a full stream of consciousness. Mm. And so, yeah, that's one thing. Breathing, Mm -hmm. breathing, Rima. Like I just taking in, breathing out, like, man, that, um, I mean, I I still read my Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, not as much as I I used to, I used used to do the, the, I've done the year, year round Bible three years in a row back to back. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, you know, and just and just wanting, wanting to be in God's presence, like like and sometimes it's music. Sometimes it's just, man, I was in the ocean the other day, and just mm. I just sat and meditated and just thanked God for like just having awareness of God's creation and God's beauty. Just trying to create that sense of constant awareness and um being f- trying to be as much as possible fully aware of God's presence because the presence never leaves. It's just are we are we acknowledging or not so just to keep wow. to be fully given over to being able to um observe it as best as i could as much as possible amen yeah um you may be serving oh yeah yeah sir and, and and but i mean like that's everything from going to soup kitchen that's from like having a woman next to me literally happened just yesterday she the woman sat next to me on the plane and she was sobbing and I just texted my boy, just like tell him I'm here for you. I love you. I got you. If you need anything, you were there for me. Call me for anything. And then have her sit next to me, and she's sobbing and just, <clears throat> just visibly stricken. I was like, how could I send that message and not say anything wow. to her? And it's like this might be a social faux pas. This might be against, you know, code. But I was like, I just, I just leaned over and I said, I don't mean to be nosy, but whatever you're going through, I'm sorry for what you're going through. And then she told me what she's going through. And I just jokingly said, well, if you need to grab my arm and hit me, you're okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm here for you. So, and it was just that. And I was like, I had to say something. I couldn't let it go. You know, I feel like that's, that should be a basic human reaction. Yes. I know we send a, sometimes we confuse boundaries with, with not allowing us to serve people or not, wow. not be used in a moment. So I just want to, I just, just made myself available. And then she, and it was up to her to do what she wanted. It was not my, place to give advice or to do anything but just to be available and so that's another way yeah that's beautiful um speaking of prayer the way the way that you were speaking about prayer reminded me of two great books uh one that i've read recently one that i'm reading right now one is uh practicing the presence of god by um brother lawrence who was a a monk um and then um um is it said that we have to practice it? Like, well, his, yeah. His, <laughs> I mean, I know, I know yeah, that yeah, yeah. his talent is different, but I was thinking, yeah, yeah. Some, the fact that we have to practice it. Well, what you described, <laughs> though, what you described, um, you know, um, kind of like sitting in silence and going into like uh, your deepest stream of constant consciousness with God and not asking for anything, not that whole thing. Like, that's really, uh, you know, he's using 17th you know, century language, but that, that's what it is. Like practicing the presence is, is getting back to that, you know, his, his, yeah, yeah. his thing was like, it doesn't matter. It, you, you know, by, by the end of his life, he was saying that he was um, nearly constantly aware. You said aware and attuned of the presence of God. So he was saying whether he was saying he, he was experiencing the presence of God um, in the same measure, whether he was peeling potatoes or cooking for people as when he was doing like the, um, the monastery devotions. Bro, I love that and, so much. Yeah. And so that, that's what it reminded me of. And the other book is, um, practicing the way by, uh, John Mark Homer. And he tells a story in there where, um, I can't remember if it was him or, or it, it, w- it was somebody that he knew, but they, went into um, a, ch- a church, I-, I think it was overseas, went to a church and saw a man um, who was just this empty church and he's sitting in a pew and he's sitting there. And every time he would go in the church, every time the person observing this man would go, go into that church, the man would be there and he'd be there for hours and just sitting there. And, and he, mm-hmm. they asked him like, what do you, what, when, you, when you pray, what do you do? And he says, I look at God, he looks at me, and we are happy. Ooh, that's so beautiful. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Bro, and that's so that it. and that's like that's what you said reminded me of even the ocean thing. Like that's like 
practicing the presence of God. Like in mm-hmm, the way that yeah. you said, he's always present. It's our awareness and us being attuned to it. Exactly. That kind of, um, Whew. yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, so, sir. uh, anyway, that I just, I, those answers, uh, sparked that in me, but, um, all right. So I want to ask you some rapid fire questions. Let's get it. Let's I feel get like it. we've gotten to know you pretty well. I would say um, so. On the podcast. I think you're going to get a bunch of new fans after this. Hey. I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I get where where <laughs> Dill gets it from. Like, I, I, know, I, right? I see the laugh. <laughs> bro, you know bro. what I'm saying? I see the the skin, you understand? Like, you, you know yeah, what I mean? You don't but understand. But no, but uh, all right. So uh, let's, let, let, uh, let, let's sew up that newfound fandom with these questions. So, all right. You just got to answer. If you ask me top five MCs, man, I'm no, leaving. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, Actually, that should have been in here, but it's not. It's 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 gonna get much weirder than that. So, oh, even um, better. You just gotta say first things on your head. All right. So, what's the strangest talent you have that no one knows about? Um, I'm a math nerd. I don't know if that's the strangest. That's the first one I think of. But yeah. I mean, I didn't know that. You're a math nerd. Like- I was almost a math major. And then I was going to be an accounting major. And then at the last minute, at the end of my senior year, I decided to be a music major. They always say like math and music go together. I, I was terrible at math. Horrible. <laughs> so I always like kind of rejected that. But I guess, I mean, they were right in your case. Oh, well, yeah, in my case, yeah. All right. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Is that type of food or a, a singular item? I'm going to go singular item. Hummus. I eat that junk. I dip my hand in, eat it straight with my hands. Wow. I don't need none to dip in it, just straight hummus. I will drink that mug. Wow. Athanasio, yes, you probably like that, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 What? Come on. What? My favorite oh, what? The hate. My favorite podcast. People talk to people off camera. I can't I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that, Chelsea. I you mean, know? people know that someone is here operating yeah, yeah. the stuff. I mean, we can yeah, you know. Uh okay. All right. Um if you could, I, this I like this one a lot. If you could collaborate with any historical figure, who would it be, and what would you create? Oh my gosh, this is going for days. Well, well, the first person on my mind is Prince because Prince is the reason why I'm a musician because he's the soundtrack to my childhood. So, Prince, I mean, I would do anything. I would watch him create. I would just <laughs> we could cook. We could. I think he was vegan. We would just make vegan recipes. I don't anything with Prince. I just yeah. want make. Pants. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to hang out with Prince. All right. So look. So all right. So it's a situation like today. Like you're you're in a, a rehearsal space, right? And you're setting up, and Prince walks in. You're plan <laughs> you're planning to have another thing, right? But he walks in, and he's like, five hours, we can do whatever. What are I, you doing? I, I think I just named them all. Um, <laughs> make music. Make vegan recipes and make pants. <laughs> there you go. That printed with something. Music, vegan recipes, and pants. That's a wrap That's right the there. Prince pack. That's All a right. Prince pack. All right. Uh, I love it. What is, oh, I love this one too. What's the most absurd criticism you've ever received about your work and how did you respond? Oh, well, okay. I remember I used to march drum corps. No, I would, well, no, no. I was in jazz band, high school jazz band. And a judge talked about, he was criticizing my, how the swing pattern that I played on the ride cymbal with my right hand, he talked, he said it was too tight. And I was like, bro, like I studied the legends. Like, bro, I'm not tight. Like I studied the dopest drummers that have the most loose vibey ride pattern. Like, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. So then I just, I, it made me practice harder. So I guess credit to that judge, but I was, I was not happy about that. Wow. So you were just like, nah, man, my swing is swinging. Dude, my swing is swinging, man. My swing is swinging. But it made you go harder. It made me go harder. So was Shout it like like after that there was like an '80s montage of you like exactly doing swing yeah patterns? it was almost like Whiplash almost not quite but similar to Whiplash <laughs> what I went through sweating in the practice room yeah big breathing ahead with my fists so yeah. Like, yeah well uh, shout out shout out that uh, instructor um all right they're I, I'm not gonna lie to you they're giving me the the wrap it up on camera so they're not letting us be great y'all uh, I'm so sorry so but let's do this one. I'm doing two more. So if you could live in any sitcom world, which one would it be and why? Bro, what? That's deep right there. I mean, obviously that's a big Cosby show, but I can't say that. I, what's happening? <laughs> For those of you, you young people, please. that out on IG. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I liked him before he was a problem. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but um, dude, what's happening? Okay, what's happening? I would hang out with Raj and Dwayne. Rerun doing the pop lock. And sure, oh, sure, Big that, Shirley's that's... Big Shirley's diner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, man. The more I talk about, it, the more I, I'm. Yeah, that was 100 percent spot on. Okay. Yeah. What's happening? Google it, kids. <laughs> Google it, kids. <laughs> um. All right. Final question. Where will you be March 9th? <laughs> I'm gonna be at Analog at the Hutton Hotel, playing drums for my favorite MC. Oh wow! No disrespect, John Keith. Um, <laughs> all, all disrespect. All disrespect. <laughs> all the disrespect. All disrespect. Back in, back in my man up, one of the illest lyricists. All disrespect. Around with a live band and the baddest band in all of Nashville. That's actually true. It's, it's that's not a lie. Those like, are all facts. You no cap. You casually put together the best band. It's in cold. I mean, I just happen. I'm just blessed with amazing friends. Yeah. But th- these are the dopest musicians in town. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah. Well, we hope to see everybody. Not. And I was gonna say everybody in Nashville. Not everybody in Nashville. Everybody in Tennessee, and I think the nine bordering states. Y'all have no excuse. Don't facts. Leave me comments. When are you coming to Buck Snort? When are you coming to Bug Scuffle? When are you coming to? to- Laura's Ch- left Chilicocky. eye, Kentucky. I'm not. Come yeah. to Nashville, Tennessee. It's, it's on a weekend. From you. You're not working. It's a Saturday. Just come. Just drive. Leave 7 o'clock in the morning. I've done it. You can do it. Come it's on. it's fine. It's you fine. It. You'll be okay. And I promise you, nobody who comes to this, sh- to this show, this is true, nobody who comes to this show, no matter where you come from, will leave this show and say, man, I really wish I wouldn't have come to this show. That is. It's impossible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Impossible. I agree. Agreed. Agreed. Well, thank you so much for being on the very first episode. Yes, sir. Of inaugural Creative Control. Yes, the inaugural episode of Creative Control. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Thank Likewise. you so much. I love you. I love you too, Neff. And I Dude. can't wait to to rock this show. Out. I'm so hyped. To be continued, baby. To yes, be continued. Sir.